I used to see saving money as a challenge because I didn't think of saving money the same way as I do today. And that held me back for years until I had a mindset shift that made me see just how easy it is to save money. So if you're like I was and saving money is a challenge for you right now, or if you just wanna figure out ways to save more money, this is the video for you. I'm about to show you exactly how I save over 30% of my income without even trying and how you can too. Hey, what's up? My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth where I show you how to save money and make more money all while bettering yourself every single day so you can live life on your own terms. Let's get into this video. At the time of this recording, I've saved well over $70,000 in a relatively short amount of time. Like this was within about a four year period of time. The thing I want you to get from this video is I can do much better than that, but at the time, I didn't know what I know now. And what I'm gonna share with you right now is gonna help you save money a lot faster than you would have. So just to jump right into this, there's a 99% chance that the way you're thinking about saving money is wrong. If you think of saving money as something that requires a lot of discipline, maturity, a strong reason why, if you're thinking about multiple different strategies to save money, I'm telling you right now, you're working harder, not smarter. And continuing to think about saving money that way is only gonna cost you money in the long run. I used to think that way too. And it wasn't until recently that something finally clicked and I realized that that way of thinking is exhausting. Like you shouldn't have to think that much about saving money. You shouldn't have to argue and contemplate with yourself about how much you're able to save this month. Because when I did that to myself, I was leaving money on the table and I didn't even realize it. But then I thought to myself, my bills are always paid. Everything I wanna buy, whether it's food, shoes, movie tickets, clothes, they all get paid in full. So how am I gonna pay everyone else in full, but then in the same breath, deprive myself of the money that I deserve? It doesn't make sense, right? So that was my first mindset shift. I knew from that point on, I couldn't think of saving money as restricting myself from spending, but I needed to think of saving money as a bill that I pay myself. I had to think of it as spending money because it's easy to spend money. It takes absolutely no discipline to spend money. All it takes is a desire. And that desire could be something as simple as, I'm hungry, I want something to eat. Now I know I got a bunch of Nikes at home, but did you see what they got at the mall? I, I gotta get those. And I know I got a TV at home, but this one here at Best Buy is bigger than the one I got at the house and it's on sale. And so in those cases, it's very easy to justify spending that money. And we just keep spending and spending until the end of the month. And then we wonder where all the money goes. And then as a way to counteract that, we kick ourselves and we say, man, I got I to gotta do better next month. I got to be more disciplined than that. I'm gonna buckle down and cut back on some things. You know what I mean? I'm gonna cut back on the coffee and I'm not gonna break down and buy any shoes this month. Matter of fact, I'm not even gonna look at no shoes. I'm gonna just stay at home and stare at the wall. Then you realize even after putting in all that work and effort and being disciplined, you didn't end up saving the amount of money you hoped you would. At least that's what happened to me, but it's because I wasn't treating the money I wanted to save the right way. And the right way to treat saving money is by treating it like it's a bill, like it's an expense. Because when I treat it like it's an expense, I don't think about it. For example, when I'm looking at my bills, they're all automated, so I don't think about them. Whenever I'm at the store and I wanna get something, I just buy it and I don't think about it, whether it's something I want or something I need. See, spending money is easy, but saving money is hard. So just think of saving money the same way you think of spending money and automatically you'll be able to increase the amount of money you're able to save. And the biggest pro tip I can give you right now about saving money is outlining a certain amount of money that you wanna save every month without fail. That's the start of saving 30% of your income like I'm doing right now. And then from there I noticed there's actually still a lot of opportunity to cut back on some things so I can save even more money. So that 30% becomes 35%, which becomes 40% and then 50%. And it just keeps adding up as long as you keep improving on this. But before we get there, we do this. What I did was when I was setting the number that I wanted to save every month, I made sure that it was something that was a good amount to save every month, but it was also something for me to easily achieve every month. From there, I automated it just as if it were a bill. And what I did to do this in the most effective way possible, I looked at how my income would flow throughout the entire month. So you know how throughout the month you have these weird periods where you have a little bit of money and then you have a lot of money? Like the 1st through the 15th, you might not have that much money left over after your bills, but the 16th through the 30th, you might have a lot of money left over or vice versa. What I did was I chose a time of the month where I could afford to give myself the amount of money that I wanted to save in the first place all at once. And in my case, that was on the 15th of every month. So I simply set up this automation in my primary bank account and it sends it to another savings account, which is out of sight, out of mind. 
That way I don't have to worry about it or think about it or look at it. And as I did this a few times, it became easy because I know, okay, I'm not missing that money because I expect, let's say, $1,000 to leave my account this month on the 15th. And I expect the same thing every month after this month. And you can actually set this up however you want, whatever date benefits you, whatever amount of money benefits you. And then you'll get to the point where you're like, okay, I expect $500 to leave my account this month. I expect $750 to leave my account this month, just like your bills. Next thing you know, you open your savings account and you got stacks in it because you took the time to improve. You took the time to save the amount of money that you've been wanting to save over the course of time. So what happens is the hundreds of dollars that you've been putting to the side every month becomes thousands of dollars. And as I did that, something clicked again in my head. You know how at work they set you up with retirement plans and they have a small amount of your paychecks going towards that? And that's typically called a 401k, right? But that's an example of money that you don't miss. That's money you don't think about, but it's money that's being saved for you over time and what's even better about this account is it accumulates interest because it's invested in the stock market so once that clicked i realized i needed to do something a little different with my money like i knew that saving money is great and the savings account that i have my money going to is also great but since that account i have at work is growing so fast over the course of just a few years i could be doing that same thing on my own so I opened up a Roth IRA and I opened up a Weeble account to invest in individual stocks. And again, on the 15th of every month, I wanted a certain amount of money that I was able to save to go towards my investment accounts. So that's how you save money, but that's also how you grow your money at the same time. And this is how I found out you have to treat saving money like you're spending money. Because the moment I started investing in the stock market, I just became so intrigued and addicted because of, you know, the growth, the companies, how the stock market works, all that stuff. So it just motivated me to save more money every month so I could put it in the stock market so it could grow for me. There's always been something that has just infatuated me about my money working for me. I'm not saying you have to do it. Like if you're someone who doesn't feel comfortable doing that, that's cool. I'm not saying you have to do it. But I am saying when you get addicted to the feeling of having that financial cushion, that amount of money that just keeps growing and growing and growing, you're going to want to save more. You're going to want to figure out ways to put more money in there. Because one thing about spending money is whenever you spend money on something you want, you figure out how to get it. Even if you feel like you don't have enough money for it, you figure out a way. You might put an item on layaway, you might sell some stuff, you might work a little harder, but either way, you figure out a way to find the money to get what it is that you want. So if you apply that same logic to saving money, you'll be golden. And it actually brings me to my next point. There's different forms of saving, and I think it's extremely important that we do all three of them. So I'm gonna break them down real quick for you. There's saving money in your savings account, there's investing your money, and yes, that is a form of saving money, but there's also something that we don't talk about as much. And that's actually making more money while keeping your expenses the same. I wouldn't list these three things for you if I haven't done them myself. And I can tell you, saving money in my savings account is actually what built the desire in me to do the other two things. Because I remember being 22 years old, saving my first $20,000. Like at that time, to me, that was a fortune to be able to save up by myself. And I was living alone while I did it too. But then I realized, wait a minute, I could actually save more if I just made more money and kept my expenses exactly the same. But instead of spending that extra money on a bigger apartment, a nicer car, or pimping out my living room, I actually just put that extra money in my savings account. And then I realized, okay, now that I can save more money, I can actually afford to put more money into my investment accounts. So they can grow even more because you know, the earlier you start investing, the more it's gonna grow for you over time. And I know that the experts might tell you that 4% return is good, 8% return is good, but I've been seeing 17%, 20%. Like think about what doubling and tripling these percentages can actually do for your wealth. I say that because if you just put it in a 401k, you have limited control over what those percentages could be. But if you take it in your own hands like I did, then you have more control over what the percentages could possibly be because you make your own investment decisions. Not everyone's gonna do that, but I just thought I'd throw it out there. So now, I don't think of saving money as a sacrifice. I think of it as a normal transaction that I do every single month. And it's so easy for me now because I've got this down to a science where I don't even have to think about it because I studied how my money moves every month. I know what my number is going in and going out every single month. 
I study how the first through the 15th, I have a lot of expenses and I don't have a ton of money left over. But I also study how the 16th through the 30th, I don't really have any expenses at all. So I know that's my cue to get in there and save and invest as much money as possible automatically. That's how I got to saving 30% of my income. And when I say 30%, I'm only talking about the money coming in from my job. Because I do, because I do realize that for most of us, our job is our primary source of income. And if you can save a big chunk of that, you can save a big chunk of anything. Because let me tell you this, for my other streams of income, I don't really touch them. I just let them stack up. And the thing is, you can actually get really creative with this. You can have yourself a buffer in your bank account for spending money because obviously you're going to need to spend money on other things like, okay, I'm going to spend this much on groceries and I'm going to spend this much on gas. And you can set it up however you want. You just got to think, how much money do you want to spend on entertainment? How much money do you want to spend on dates or whatever may have you? And on top of all of that, you can still save the same amount of money that you set for yourself at the very beginning while still having some spending money off to the side. Then if you wanna do some real damage, any money you have left over at the end of the month, you can transfer that bad boy over to your savings account. And that's one thing that can turn your 30% into 31%. And then from there, you keep going, you keep saving, you keep improving. And that's exactly what I've done. So going into 2022, I definitely have some goals I'm gonna share with you towards the end of the year, but just to give you some transparency right now, I wanna tell you this. Right now I have two other streams of income, one being the stock market, the other one being YouTube. And my plan going into this next year is really growing my other streams of income. And if you watch my side hustle video, you'll know what I mean. My plan is to make an extra $10,000 a month just from YouTube and everything else that comes of YouTube, like my website, my coaching services, my courses, maybe some books coming up, you know what I'm saying, all that stuff. But yeah, if you want to know what I'm working on and stuff like that, in my side hustle video, I give you everything that I'm working on coming next year, and I'm really excited about it. But I say that to say I plan to grow my other streams of income so I can save even more and invest even more. And that's to show you I practice what I preach, and that's how you go from 30% and take that to 50%. And then even 60%, because my whole point of saving money for me is to build wealth. You might have a different reason or a different motive behind you saving money, but mine is completely to build wealth because I realize that when you save money one specific way, like for example, just putting it in your savings account, you can only build so much. So I personally want to diversify and make more money on the side and invest my money so I can increase the amount of gains I could have on how much I'm saving. And the number one way I want to do this is by having my money work for me. So I'm really heavily focused on investing right now. So just stay tuned because a year from now, I'm definitely making a follow up video and hopefully I can title it saying this is how I save 60% of my income. And that's how I personally plan to maximize the amount of money that I save. That's the best way to do it in my opinion, but I'm not necessarily saying, hey, you better go do this. That it's in your best interest to do this. I'm not doing all that. I'm not a financial advisor. All I'm telling you is what I'm doing. All of my content is for educational purposes and, of course, entertainment. Got to throw some humor in there, some personality in there. But, yeah, that's the purpose for my content, just to keep you informed. You got to make your own decisions and do your own research based off of what I'm saying. But with that being said, I'd be putting you at an extreme disservice if I left out the investing or left out the making extra money on the side. Because I think that it is extremely important if you want to maximize the amount of money you're able to save. Especially when you think about the fact that when you do invest, your money is literally growing for you in the background while you're making extra money or while you're just doing your regular job. So that's cool, too, because honestly, there's not a better feeling than knowing that, OK, I have a solid job. And on top of that, I'm making extra money on the side. And on top of that, in the background, my money's growing for me. That's cold. So yeah, that's how I've saved well over $70,000 in less than four years. And it's also how I save over 30% of my income right now effortlessly. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.